everyone, Pastor Bill Wiggs here from the Sunfield and Greenwood United Methodist Churches in Southern Illinois, and with me is my wife, Becky. Hi. And this is our devotional prayer and praise service for Tuesday, October 6th, 2020. Well, it's good to be in worship with you again. You'll notice that our slide in the front of this video has changed just a little bit, and that's because we have a new platform starting in tomorrow's video where this will appear as well. So now we'll be on Facebook, YouTube, and Parlor. And on Parlor, it's Walking in the Word at Pastor Bill Wiggs Jr. So we're looking forward to that. We hope that increases our reach so that many more can hear about the love and grace of God and can experience these times of prayer to help them grow in Christian service and in their faith. So let's enter into this time of prayer and praise as we open our hearts to the Lord. O oh Lord, we cannot understand how you can care for us, for we are simply mortal human beings, yet you notice us and want to have a relationship with us. In this hour of prayer, may we come to a realization of your love and be more open to your Spirit's leading. Almighty God, in you there is no darkness at all. Give us your eternal light. When we cannot see the way before us, may we continue to put our trust in you that under your guidance and protection, we may be kept from falling this day. And finally, by your mercy, enter into our rest through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, if you've been watching this series of prayer services, you know that we are working our way through the United Methodist Confession of Faith. And today we are at Article 6, The Sacraments. Let's join in it together. We, we believe, believe the sacraments ordained by Christ are symbols and pledges of the Christian profession and of God's love toward us. They are means of grace by which God works invisibly in us, quickening, strengthening, and confirming our faith in Him. Two sacraments are ordained by Christ our Lord, namely baptism and the Lord's Supper. We believe baptism signifies entrance into the household of faith and is a symbol of repentance and inner cleansing from sin, a representation of the new birth in Christ Jesus and a mark of Christian discipleship. We believe children are under the atonement of Christ and as heirs of the kingdom of God are acceptable subjects for Christian baptism. Children of believing parents, through baptism, become the special responsibility of the church. They should be nurtured and led to a personal acceptance of Christ and by profession of faith, confirm their baptism. We believe the Lord's Supper is a representation of our redemption, a memorial of the sufferings and death of Christ, and a token of love and union which Christians have with Christ and with one another. Those who rightly, worthily, and in faith eat the broken bread and drink the blessed cup partake of the body and blood of Christ in a spiritual manner until he comes. Well, that's a really loaded statement. There's a lot in it. I don't want to spend a lot of time on it, but I do want to make a couple of points. If you are Roman Catholic, you will realize that there is a difference in this, right? You have seven sacraments. We have two we believe other things that the Roman Catholic Church says are sacraments are sacramental in nature, such as marriage and ordination and confirmation and uh, prayer for the sick. All those things are sacramental in nature, but that since they were not directly instituted by Christ, they are not considered sacraments, but they do bring a sacramental presence into your life. That may sound like double speak, but that's the way we understand them. And so what that just means is they are special means of grace that are different than some of the other means of grace, like Christian fellowship, things of that nature, right. where you really open yourself up to God and his desires for your life mm -hmm. so you can live for him. And so we believe that they are symbols and pledges, so they are both something that we can see in the world, but they also are something the Holy Spirit is speaking to us through them as we receive the sacraments or participate in sacramental acts. So of these two sacraments, baptism is the sacrament of initiation. 
And we say that we do baptize infants in the church. Now, I must say immediately that all United Methodists do not agree with yeah. baptizing infants. And it's part of the reason why we are United Methodists is because we have two streams of thought. We and have, I think it's okay to disagree. Yeah, I think it is. We, we have the Evangelical United Brethren part of it that had both baptism and dedication of children. Mm -hmm. And we have the Methodist Episcopal part of it that kind of came in there. And they believed strictly in baptism of children. Mm -hmm. Really, the truth of the matter is when we baptize a child, the whole family and the church together are committing themselves to raise the child up in the Lord so that when they get to an age of accountability, 12, 13, wherever it hits for that child, I know one right now, they're nine. Mm -hmm. And there's no doubt in my mind, I had a conversation with her the other day. She is at the age of accountability. She's a very mature nine-year-old. She believes, she knows, she is absolutely convinced, and she chose to be baptized. Mm -hmm. Well, because she wasn't baptized as an infant, she was baptized. Now, when we have someone who's baptized as an infant who comes to faith, what do we do? We confirm. We put them through confirmation classes so they can learn more about our Methodist beliefs. Right, and so that they can profess their faith in the Lord. Now, if you go through the classes, you don't have to become a Methodist at exactly. that moment. And you don't have to stand before the church and say, I believe in Jesus Christ. Because if you don't, there's no point. Exactly. And so we believe that confirmation, that's one of those sacramentals, that's why I mentioned it, mm -hmm. is a sacramental way for those who were baptized as infants to say, Yes, indeed, I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, and I accept for myself the baptism that I have received. Could someone come as an adult if they have been baptized as an infant and then go through confirmation classes and say, this isn't for me, I don't want it, and they choose not to be confirmed at the time that they go through those confirmation classes? Could they later, as they grow up and learn and study more, then come to you and say, I want to be confirmed. I know I'm not confirmation age. I'm 30. I'm not 12. Can that person then be confirmed in the faith at that point? Or would it go through a totally different type of membership? Well, the answer is yes, they could be confirmed. And? And a lot of times we would just take them through membership classes for someone who is an adult. However, I At think... At the same time, they do stand up and take absolutely. that vow of faith in front of the congregation, whether it's in a confirmation setting or becoming a member setting. They proclaim right. their faith at that point. Absolutely. And if they were baptized as infants in the membership, adult membership kind of situation, they confirm that. So it is a form of confirmation. Okay. I think we messed it up. <laughs> in the Episcopal Church, in the Catholic Church sometimes, in Lutheran churches sometimes, there is an adult confirmation. Okay. And what we've often done is pretend that we're Baptist. <laughs> no, seriously, now think about this. When Baptists, I'm not, this isn't being pejorative. When Baptists join the church, usually at the end of a service, the pastor invites people to join the church. They come down front, they proclaim themselves members, and they are. Hmm. Or in some Baptist churches, they then have to submit to baptism no matter how many times they've been baptized before. Okay. Well, what if they don't believe what that church says and they just like the pastor's sermon? True. Doesn't matter. Now, this isn't all Baptists, so if you're listening to this and you're a Baptist, say, that's not how we do it. I understand that. But a very large majority of Baptist churches do that. In Methodism, we kind of accidentally adopted that. Hmm. And not in the same way. You can't just come down and now you're a member, but we don't take them through training mostly. Right. And what we've learned is there's a lot of people who are members of the United Methodist Church who have no inkling of what we believe. Exactly. And maybe they were baptized as infants and we went, okay, you're good, let's go. Mm -hmm. That's a big mistake. We should have adult confirmation. And I've kind of developed true. that throughout the years mm -hmm. with uh, my exploring membership classes and things of that nature. Confirming your faith is very important. Yes, Knowing what you believe, which is the whole point of my teaching ministry, exactly. is so important. And so we have to have that mark. But baptism, especially in adult or older, older uh, child baptism where they choose it, 
is a representation of the new birth that they've received in a market Christian discipleship. In a way, our belief system talks out of both sides of our mouth. Truth. And the reason that is, is because of the various streams that we have. Right. But the truth of the matter is, if you're baptized as an infant, or if you're baptized as a youth, or if you're baptized as an adult, if you don't believe, it doesn't matter. Then you just got wet. Mm -hmm. That's the deal. That's the deal. All right, well, let's move on to communion then. We believe that communion is a sacrament. It's something that Christ ordered us to do. Do this in remembrance of me, right? And we believe that Christ is truly present at communion. Yes. Now, is the juice juice? Yes. yes. Is the bread bread? Yes. yes. Does it transform in any way? No. No. The Roman Catholic teaching is transubstantiation. They believe that when the priest actually says the words of consecration, the prayer of consecration, that they physically, spiritually, they're a little fuzzy on it, transform into the body and blood of Christ. It still tastes like bread, still tastes like wine, but it's the body and blood of Christ. The Lutherans, not wanting to give up the total understanding of the Catholic mm -hmm. Church, said, well... It looks like bread to us. It looks like wine to us, but we know it's the body and blood of Christ. Therefore, we believe in consubstantiation. It's both and. Mm -hmm. It's still bread, but it's the body. It's still, it's still wine, but it's the blood. Methodists and most Protestants said it's bread and it's wine, but Christ shows up. And it represents his body and blood. Right. We see it as a representation, not the actual Bloody, blood and body. Absolutely. But we are not like Anabaptists who say it's just a memorial. They don't believe that Christ is present in communion. They just believe that it's the church rehearsing what he did, basically. That's sad. Yeah, I kind of think it is. We believe that Christ is truly present because he promised to be at the table with us and that we receive special grace because he's present. Our scripture today is from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 17 to 21. This means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone, a new life has begun. And all of this is a gift from God who brought us back to himself through Christ. And God has given us this task of reconciling people to him. For God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, no longer counting people's sins against them. And he gave us this wonderful message of reconciliation. So we are Christ's ambassadors. God is making his appeal through us. We speak for Christ when we plead, come back to God. For God made Christ, who never sinned, to be the offering for our sin, so that we could be made right with God through Christ. Well, this passage is actually from the Revised Common Lectionary for today, and they didn't know that we were going to be working on Article 6. That's right. <laughs> but it really blends right into the point that I was making with our con article of the Confession of Faith. It goes right into it. You remember that I said, unless you believe in Jesus Christ, it doesn't matter how much water was used, because we do, I didn't mention that, we do believe that baptism by sprinkling, pouring, or by immersion. Immersion is by far the what most Christians have, but an awful lot of Methodists and various other uh, churches do sprinkling or pouring. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter how much water was used. It doesn't matter when you were baptized. If you don't believe in Jesus Christ, you just got wet. Exactly. And so when we believe in Jesus Christ, the Apostle Paul, inspired by the Holy Spirit here, says we actually become a new person. We are a new creation in Christ. The old gone, the new has begun. We must, as Jesus said, we must be born again. Mm -hmm. And that's not about entering your mother's womb again, as Nicodemus said, how can I do that? I'm an old guy. Right. No, it's about being born by the Spirit of God, our sins washed away, us becoming brand new people. Yes. If you have not become a new person in Christ, if you have not received him as your Lord and Savior, even if you were baptized, even if your name's on a church roll, even if you received the sacraments, you are not saved. Mm -hmm. You must, you must accept Christ as your Lord and Savior. You must. 
That's one of the biggest things we do in confirmation class right. is we lead young people to the Lord. We right. give them the opportunity. If they refuse to accept Christ, then they don't accept Christ exactly. and they don't be confirmed. And that's always sad to me. And I've it had is. a few who, who didn't it want is. to be confirmed. And their parents and grandparents that sent them to us for confirmation were really upset, but they didn't believe. And they were actually honest enough to say, I don't really believe what I'm, what you're asking me to say here. Right. Other kids I've had, they went through confirmation class. They treated it like a graduation. And they didn't right. show back up at church again. I graduated. Again. I'm done. I'm confirmed. I don't have to be here anymore. Right. They said it without becoming born again. Exactly. How was that? Because it was with their mind and with their lips, but not with their heart. We must be born again. And so if you're watching this video today and you're beginning to question your salvation, that's okay. There's a good way to solve this. And that is very simply to say, yes, indeed, I believe in Jesus Christ for my salvation. I know that I am a sinner. I know that Christ died for my sins and I want him to forgive me. You just gotta ask him, say, Lord, I know that I'm a sinner. I know that you've died for me. Forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart and make me new. Pretty simple. It's real simple. And then follow him. Walk in his word. Walk in his truth. Live his life in you. And if you're watching this and you don't have a church home, I know a lot of our folks are watching. We know they have a church home. If you don't, find a Bible-believing, spirit-filled church in your area. I know we've got people watching around the world now. Some of you may have trouble finding a Bible-believing, spirit-filled church. Get a body of believers. Mm -hmm. Be involved in that. Grow because you're a new person in Christ. Be a house church. Invite your friends to come to your place and watch a live worship service online. Yeah, yeah. I encourage that if you are not able to go to a church. Yes. But I do say, if you're able to go to an already established church that is, again, Bible-believing yes. and Spirit-filled, we got a lot of things that say church on the door, but they're not a church. It's sad, but they're not a church. And you, if you're, if you're filled with the Spirit, the Holy Spirit within you will discern pretty readily and quickly if that church is not Bible-believing or Spirit-filled. We have visited some when oh, we've been yes, on vacation, yeah. and we could tell just by sitting in worship that they were not really what they claimed to be on the door. That's right. And so be born again. Accept Jesus Christ. Ask him to forgive you of your sins. Live for him. Find a Bible-believing church to be a part of. If there are no Bible-believing churches where you are, maybe you're in Iran and you're having trouble finding a church. Get some brothers and sisters together and ask the Holy Spirit to impart his knowledge to you as that group together. Yes. I encourage that. That's so important. If you're in America, I guarantee you can find a Bible-believing church if you give it a try. Although some of our regions are getting pretty slim on that. Unfortunately true. Maybe God's calling you to ministry and you need to contact me and we can get you going. Yes. So I want to encourage you in that. But we must be born again. You, if you believe in Christ, you are a new creation, a new person. The old life is gone. The new life has begun. Let us live into it. Amen. Amen. Well, let's enter into a time of prayer. And I encourage you that you will pause the video now. You'll enter into a private time of prayer. Or if your family's together, enter into family prayer. Pray for the needs of your family. Pray for the needs of your church. Yes, your church. Pray for the needs of this country. Lift up all those in need, and praise and thank him for all the good that he's done in your life. Yes. So pause the video now, and when you come back, we'll, be, we'll pray together. Gracious and loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for all those who have received salvation in your name. We thank you, God, for the sacraments that help us to grow in our faith. We thank you, Lord, that through Jesus Christ, we are saved because his blood is washed away all stain of sin. Lord God, we ask that if there are those listening to this video who have not accepted Christ, that they will do that right now. It's so simple. We thank you, Lord, for that gift. We pray, Lord, today for all who are sick. 
We ask that you would bring your healing touch on them. We pray for our leaders, especially our president and the first lady and all those who are dealing with the COVID virus. We pray, Lord God, that you would do a wondrous work in this nation to eradicate this virus right now in Jesus' name. Lord, be with all the doctors, nurses, and everyone who's working to bring healing to our nation. And Lord, in all things, we ask that you would be glorified, that we would see you lifted up. Lord, we thank you and praise you for all of this. In Jesus' precious name, amen. amen. My Jesus, I love thee, I know thou art mine. For thee all the follies of sin I resign. My gracious Redeemer, my Savior art thou. If ever I love thee, my Jesus, tis now. I love thee because thou hast first loved me and purchased my pardon on Calvary's tree. I love thee for wearing the thorns on thy brow. If ever I love thee, my Jesus, tis now. In mansions of glory and endless delight, I'll ever adore thee in heaven so bright. I'll sing with the glittering crown on my brow. If ever I love thee, my Jesus, tis now. Well, I hope you enjoyed this service today. I hope you participated in it. And if you have any questions, I encourage you to contact me. You can email me at pastorbillwigsjr at gmail.com, and I can hopefully help you with some of those questions. And those of you who are members of our two churches, you probably already have his cell phone number. Feel free to call him. <laughs> You do. And family that's watching has my cell phone number. Yes. If you have any questions, please give me a call. And if you're feeling a call to ministry, definitely contact me and I can connect you with the right folks and we can get you going. Well, until tomorrow, my brothers and sisters in Christ, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face smile upon you and may he give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. You have a great rest of the day. God is faithful. Forever God is strong